Let's get on with it, eh, dudes? <laughs> Oh well, yeah, you, you forgot to open the weekend yesterday, so we've yeah. you know we we might as well crack on. Me and Vish forced our way in. Yeah, but I did open the weekend. <laughs> yeah, he did in the end. <laughs> yeah. Stop buttering any parsnips. Yeah. <laughs> this from Ian on email. Given the players' now quite public concerns over the amount of football currently being played, are we reaching a tipping point in the international and club football? calendar. Now, we did speak about um, the comments Rodri made um, about players maybe striking and all the rest about a month ago. Well, I think this question became something that we wanted to tackle because, as was made on the pod yesterday, there's no room in the football and calendar literally to, to, for grieving, as you guys yeah. I think, quite rightly put it. So it is absolutely packed to the brim. And this is only going to intensify. Of course, we've got the Club World Cup coming. Much has been spoken about that. Um, but until we we see less football being played, which seems unlikely, this conversation will not go away. So, Vish, why don't you have a go? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, you've just hit the you know hit the nail on the head right there because the crux of the issue is the schedule which is governed by essentially the amount of money that is flown into the game flowed into the game and for that reason i can't see a situation where there will be fewer games and now that makes you think of what what is the next step and rodri obviously mentioned um strike action there and it's interesting when you look at it because it's uh, you know he's a big player he is someone who commands, you know, a lot of respect from his peers. But it really would need a united front to actually get that through, to have it in any meaningful way. And the club game in itself is already so fractured. It's not just Rodri saying it, though, is it? That, no, no, it's not. Was... Rafael Varane said it at the start of uh, last well, season. And, you know, it's not for nothing that he's, you know, retired a couple of weeks ago. Well. Alisson has said it. Thibaut yeah. Courtois said it. Enzo Maresca said it. Pep Guardiola as you say, Rafa Varane. Well, Logan Klopp had said Rodri. it. Yeah. Klopp, Klopp's more about times mm. than about... But, but it's the same point, isn't That's it? That's why he's like, got on the yeah. energy drinks, because yeah, he, you know... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're, I mean, I it's like, part of the recovery process. I'd love to have seen him at Carabao. Yes. Yeah. I'd love mm. to have seen him at Carabao. They're happy Monster, to be joining Monster. <laughs> then probably Red Bull yeah. after that. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I'm still a Lucas Aid man. Just a bit old school. Yeah, it is old school. Remember the John Barnes advert. But, but I th- it, what, what's clear, just to pick on what Vish is saying, as things stand as we sit here recording this now, it does seem like it's going to have to come from the players. Yeah. Because as I repeatedly say, as we also kind of agree on this show, you know, the UEFA versus FIFA kind of power struggle is what's fueling a lot of this. Of course, it's about yes. money as well, but it's ultimately a bid to control the game. And the reason FIFA are doing this Club World Cup thing in the summer is because they they want some kind of skin in the game around club football as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Andy's spoken quite eloquently on why <clears throat> that's not quite worked out for them so far. I mean, there's not really been any information released or how it's going to happen, how it's going to work, who's going to be sponsoring it, blah, blah, blah. They've not been able to sell the sponsorships at anywhere near the level they needed to to make it work financially. And to me, I think it comes down to... So so I think to answer Ian's question directly, I think the FIFA Club World Cup in the summer will be the tipping point. That's my prediction. Mm. And I think as a result of that, it's ultimately the softest target for um, the players who are going to have to be in the vanguard. Now, what I mean by that is that realistically, you're not going to get top players saying, we don't want to play Premier League games. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to say we don't want to play Champions League games. And they're not realistically going to say they don't want to play international tournaments for their country. Right? It's easiest to boycott. So it? which is the one yeah. they can do it on? Mm. They're going to say off the back of a really busy summer last year, or this year as we are here now, season before that and the season after that, going into the FIFA Club World Cup, we're not doing it. And I think what's probably going to end up happening is teams like um, big teams, uh, and I say big teams, I mean probably Eurocentric teams. Come on, yeah, you could name them. Premier I mean, League teams. Real Madrid and Man City are not going to play their best players. They're going to send a youth team. Yeah. I don't think um, the South American, the Asian teams, the African teams will do that. No. Um, because I think Europe is the crucible of, of, of club football. And I think it's, it's re- these kind of Club World Cup things have always been taken a lot more seriously than by, say, South American teams in the past. So I think they may, they may stick at it. But I think we'll see it. Uh, well, I think we'll see the very quality and standard of that tournament next summer uh, be undermined in some way. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't mean people won't watch it, um, although I'm not sure they will, um, but it doesn't mean people won't watch it. I just think that... We'll be covering it. We will have to. Mm. Um, but I think it may be boycotting. It's obviously, it's obviously not going to be 
torpedoed by FIFA unless it gets disastrously bad yeah. and they want to save some face. And I think off the back of that, well, I'll bring you guys back in. I'll just say that if there is some kind of... Um, even not, not maybe not even a boycott, maybe just an undermining of it by, as you say, let's say, for example, Man City and Real Madrid don't send their best players. Can we rely on FIFA to react in a temperate fashion to that? Mm. I would argue possibly not. Well, because it will be a slap in the face to them. Exactly. So then how are they going to respond? And then you might start to see a conversation start to happen. I think I think we're actually seeing quite a lot of things changing in football in the near future, mm-hmm. especially off the back out of the Sarah Diara decision, which, you know, we'll wait for the details to come out about that. That could change football in a big way as well. I get the feeling, I could be wrong, but I get the feeling next summer might really be a tipping point on this stuff to answer Ian's question directly. And I think there may need to be a rebalance. What that looks like, I don't know, but I think that's my general thoughts. On the You're moment. nodding in agreement, Vish. Is there anything you would like to add to that? Yeah, no, I, I just, I, di- I didn't really see a tipping point, but I think Luke's point about the Club World Cup next year is is a good one. Yeah, and... I'll probably be wrong, Vish. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but, but I suppose the, my only thing was it would have to be the teams who could afford to take on FIFA. And I don't know whether Man City's lawyers are probably busy next summer, but... <laughs> You know, I suppose they've got mm. someone new to, uh, um, to to focus their attention on because I think it is going to come down to a lot of, I suppose, a lot of legal bureaucratic back and forth, um, and it will have to, you know, it will have to be started by the by the players, and I, I just think that's improbable. Mm. I, I think I think we're not talking about players striking, and you're seeing them warming their hands around the brazier. In some kind of like no, town. sure, but, yeah, but but and I think it's also a red. I'm not saying you're saying this, but I think it's also a red herring to talk about, you know, say NHL players, NBA players, NFL players, who have there's been action in the past because because that's a, a really in a way quite a simple calculation because that is the players, yeah, union essentially versus the organisation. Exactly, exactly. The problem yeah. with a, a, just to use Rodri as an example is he's playing essentially games for. Organisations including FA, Premier League, UEFA, and FIFA, mm. right? It's, they can't go to war against all of them at the same time yeah. in the same way. So they have to find the uh, they have to find the softest target they can. Then, of course, the reason it also gets a little bit uh, more complicated is because you've got players all the way down the football pyramid who are desperate to play more games because they're, they're maybe they're not playing in enough competitions. They're not quite at the level they want to be at. They only play X amount of games a year. So it's not going to be a, a blanket. Thief Pro or PFA strike thing, mm-hmm. it's going to be what Marcus says. It's going to be players in collaboration with their clubs saying, enough is enough. You can send a team there if you want, if it's important for your global reach or whatever, but you ain't sending us, right? Yeah. And do you think that he will be used as a lightning Rodri? <laughs> That's a really, really good point. Yeah. I think that would be... You've done the headline writer's job for them there, haven't you? Right, Luke Moore, you've got the next question. I have, and it's from Shona on email. Two emails so far. Old school. Old school. <laughs> Hello to you, Shona. Um, Shona says, given all the pressure currently on Ange Postacoglu after their mediocre start to the season, do you think we have a definitive answer to the question of whether fans prefer entertaining football with jeopardy or more boring football, but with a greater chance of wins? Mm, context is important here because I think that Spurs enjoyed last season under Ange Postacoglu because they'd had boring, mind you, <laughs> they'd had boring football and didn't get the wins, uh, I suppose, when, yeah. by the time Conte and, and co were going. So uh, the context is is um, is crucial because I, we see this with some sides. Uh, you think of, say, Stoke under Pulis or Kerbisley uh, at Charlton, where fans have... Nice room to get a mention. Oh, you see. Oh, even recently, uh, West Ham under Moyes. Yeah, exactly. Another good example where a manager has kind of taken a side as far as they can go. And that side, particularly with Charlton and Stoke, actually to, to make them a fairly established Premier League side, certainly in the, in the, in the example of Stoke, kind of mid-table-ish. Like I often say this with regards to Fulham, it, it's an achievement to take a club that size and make them a mid-table um, Premier League team. Without, you know, uh, you know, some sort of Haley's Comet Leicester City example or um, heavy investment and all the rest, it's probably as good as it gets for a lot of teams out there. And the, the important context, uh, sorry, very quickly, is 
Because you say mid-table, yes. it sounds a bit nothingy. But you're it, essentially saying you're making them one of the yes. ten or twelve best teams in the country. Exactly, and, yeah. and and I think people should 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 look at it like that. So, the, the, as I say, the context is key. That maybe the history, of the club, and the fan base, and so on. Do you then kind of stick or twist? But I do understand from fans' point of view. If you turn up and you think, yeah, we are stuck here. This is what we've got. Um, do you then change it? I think at Brentford, if you take Thomas Frank, there's they enjoy it a little bit more and I think again it's they've not been in the Premier League before that so blah 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 anyway I'm too, the context talking. is helpful but at the same time but if, if Spurs did any of the things you've just listed there for any of those clubs it would be a disaster for them. yeah sure so um, it depends where you look at it I understand it from from the point of view of say some clubs take West Ham and they think Let's let's have a bit more entertaining football because like we're we, okay. Moyes has, has has done okay, but th- he's done with it. If you have a club, say like Spurs, to a lesser extent maybe West Ham, but say Manchester United, where they 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 believe that they have a style of play or there's some sort of entertainment heritage, if you like, then I think it does become important. At say Chelsea, where it's more pragmatic approach it has been. For a while, they've had some some entertaining stuff. I think that they're more lenient. So when I say context, it's crucial. There's so many elements that go into this. I'm a bit more cynical about it, though, Mark. Do you think? I, I you, know, you you think about these things like the quote unquote West Ham way mm. and Spurs to dare is to do. Well, I said they stuff. believe it. Yeah, they, they may believe it, and that's fine. But I don't know if anyone can properly quantify what it means. Mm-hmm. I, what do you actually want? Like, what does it mean? Does it mean? Because if it means you want to go out there and you want to throw caution to the wind and you want to entertain people of an afternoon and be relatively content that you come away losing 4-3 at home in a barn burner of a game, mm-hmm. right? Fine. But I don't know any Tottenham fan that would be walking back down the Seven Sisters Road happy with that because they would have lost the game. No, but you... The West Ham way as well. This is a 60-odd-year-old concept that hasn't really had yeah. any bearing which in reality why, for a long time. Which is why Spurs is probably a better example because, again, go back to that 4-1 loss at home to Chelsea when they were down to nine men and the way they played. Actually, the Spurs fans, they gave them a round of applause when they came off the field. That doesn't so, mean shit though, does it? No, but it does in t- with, with regards to this conversation. Because My feeling is that fans want to win, they want to win trophies. They do want to win trophies. But again, the context is crucial because Spurs have not been winning trophies. So the, the, the idea is, you know, greater chance of winning on, and boring football. It depends. You immediately think of the top level clubs. You immediately think of, say, Real Madrid, um, what, Man City, you know, whatever. But actually, this, this is a conversation for every single team in the league. So I just decided to do it from the point of mid-table sides and maybe, say, Spurs, a bit higher than that, of course. I think if you were to offer... Um, Tottenham Hotspur or West Ham or whoever, take your pick. 2005 Jose Mourinho, they would take him. Because, it, it, because of course they would. Um, I, but think Spurs, I think Spurs are a misnomer in this conversation, full stop. Perhaps, perhaps. But I think the, the majority of fans, you're right, they want to win games. But it depends what you then get used to. Because if you're winning games every week, I think if Manchester City currently were still winning loads of trophies and all the rest of it, it was 1 0 here and a 1 0 there, and they were not that inspiring, I think they would go, oh, we're bored of this now, we want to see something but different. This, this argument and conversation happens all the time in football mm-hmm. fandom on shows like ours over and over again and what's never really talked about is the central principle which underpins all of this from every fan's point of view and that is the question what is the ultimate form of entertainment and the ultimate form of entertainment is winning yes but as I said that if that that winning becomes and that's that no but it's not that because if that winning becomes too formulaic and say quote unquote too boring or whatever but you're, you're thinking of like two teams Possibly not even that. Yeah. Well, I, but I, you're, I, rather you're thinking of teams specific specific periods with specific managers. Because mm-hmm. I think back to um, you know you look at what Ipswich have done over the last two years before mm-hmm. getting into the Premier League, and there was a level of excitement there because they were playing entertaining football and they were churning out results. Mm-hmm. And now they're in a situation where. Right. Um, what part of our principles do we need to compromise? And there are only principles that they've, you know, drawn up over the last three years, uh, how many years under McKenna. But there are principles nonetheless, and there are a reason that they fill out their stadium mm. week in week out for the last two years. And I suppose that that's when you know it, it's probably a conversation happening with Ipswich fans right now. The reason I said earlier that Spurs is a bit of a misnomer is Spurs are constantly banging their heads on what used to be a glass ceiling of getting into the top four, mm. and have then you know punted on let's say three managers in Nuno, uh, Mourinho, and Conte 
who have just been quite dull in the pursuit of basically, right, let's just really try and force our way up there. And it worked with Conte for that one season where they finished in the Champions League spots at the expense of Arsenal. And it, you know, fell on, on its arse the very next season. But that's specific to them in terms of the entertainment stuff. The reason almost Postacoglu is coming back to steal a line from um, Luke's mate, basically to run like a, a I suppose, a, a happy, clappy exorcism in that we can play an attacking way. We should be unrelenting in our principles. We're going to try and basically um, almost thrill ourselves through this, uh, you know, beyond this mm. idea that we're unlucky and we're a bit slapdash and we're like the Eeyores of North London, essentially. Um, but if you're talking about entertainment versus results, it's what the, you know, even, we can even throw Southampton into this because they, they've been abysmal at the start of the season because they just haven't, mm -hmm. you know, they, uh, they haven't um, changed their ways. And it's their fans, really, who are, thinking to themselves, shit, we've had, we've had the best, well, Ipswich specifically, we've had the best time the last two seasons. It's been really fun. Do we need to be really dull and boring now? Because they would probably actually take that. Mm -hmm. They would love to, you know, win more games in the Premier League, mm -hmm. have a few more big days out and stay up. Yeah. Which requires being that robust and slide in some of that attacking, I, I, engaging play. I just think like, if you want to go out for an isolated Saturday afternoon and go and watch a game, your team play and be entertained, that's understandable and totally your decision and that and that makes sense, I get it. But ultimately, when it comes to quote unquote entertainment, it's it's just it's just tears in the rain. Like it it really is. Like if you if you to use Spurs as an example in a slightly different way to the way Shona has, why do people remember the Bill Nicholson, Nicholson Spurs team of nineteen sixty one? Right? They did play great football. You know, I didn't see them, it was way before my time, but they played this amazing type of football. But why are they still talked about now? Because they won the double. If they made amazing entertainment football every yeah, single but week, you can, you can, no, but this, it, let me finish the point. If they do amazing football every single week and play really well over and over again, right, and won nothing, mm -hmm. right? Who's talking about them? But I think I think that in so, sixty years' time, so the who's question talking is, about them? Do you think we have a, def, um, a a definitive answer to the question? I am saying no. I'm saying I'm saying yes. You are saying this. I'm saying no. And I think Vish actually. From what you were just saying there, I would suggest you're saying no as well because you were putting lots and lots of context. I, saying, I just, don't, I just don't think that this is the, you know, th this is the experiment that comes out with the conclusion that fine. So you yeah. think the method's perhaps wrong. My, my to to clarify why I think yes is because I think if football fans in their, you know, when they're lying in bed at night, it's just them and the, you know, them and the pillow being honest with themselves, mm -hmm. and va a massive majority of them is the definitive answer to the question is we want to win something. Yeah. And I speak as someone who supports a team that have won one notable thing in my lifetime, mm -hmm. which is the FA Cup. Right, that means a lot more to the vast majority of Portsmouth fans than. You know, having great fans, which people always patronise Pompey as having, or playing quite nice football for that level of football, which people used to talk about Pompey in the past. What means the most to all those fans is winning the FA Cup. And yeah. the, the other thing, the with other... that example of Pompey, though, I think again the context is is that's why I'm, I'm sure it's, of... a, it's a broad question. Yeah, but but and that's uh, I suppose that's another reason when you flip it why this question doesn't quite work because slagging off the question is now uh, no 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 because no, no, it doesn't respect the listener. No no no, 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 no because it's important this is a because big it was the way it was framed. Yeah, and, and also. This this is a question that people have asked time and time again. Yeah, which is yeah. why Sean is asking it. Be because, because, like, the irony is in the way this question is posed, is that it's one of the other for Postecoglou. Yeah. When well, we know for a fact it isn't, because the only thing he talks about this mm -hmm, season mm -hmm. is winning something. Yeah. And they've got no chance of doing that. Yeah. Where they're playing at the moment. Ultimately. I, I know. I mean, but but then like, they could win the league. But up, the yeah. way the chips have fallen in terms of the wider football landscape for Spurs as we sit here now, the best chance they've got is that. Yeah. Like a League Cup or potentially an FA yeah. Cup. Which is which is not something he's Which is why, if, if you remember, why Spurs were so pissed off with Pochettino when he wouldn't play strong teams for the FA Cup because they would be going, look, mm. we could actually fucking, on a one-off game, we could beat anyone. Mm -hmm. We've shown that. We should be going for this. And it was the same. Was it? Did he do the same when he was Southampton manager when they went quite deep in the cup? Well, well. The, so the only, the only Spurs example, which I think trumps that, is when Daniel Levy sacked Mourinho the week before the League yeah, Cup final. Funny. Yeah, right. And, you know, I've got a few Spurs supporting mates who were done with Mourinho then, but were like, yeah. come on, mate. Mm. Like, this is... We had, a great, we had a great week on the round. We, 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 we don't, finals, yeah. yeah, no, no, but also just like, we we are not the club to be doing stuff like that. We can't be sniffing at an opportunity like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. So, yeah, it's the sort of thing that, you know, Man City did with uh, Mancini before the cup final. <laughs> they, they, he knew he was losing his job yeah. at a rapid because they could have basically do that. Yeah. To, to get back to the question, I think that, uh, I think everyone wants to win with style. 
and that is is incredibly rare and very 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 yeah. few teams do it so you tend to kind of go right do you want to win something pragmatically yeah. and speaking as England fans England let's be honest for a lot of the Euros in the summer stank out of place if yeah. they'd have managed to clinch a trophy so that's I would right. have been disappointed <laughs> <laughs> no, so you, you've summed that up perfectly then if I may be bold enough to say the last word I would say my take is in, in one in a pithy sentence is if you win something mm. you'll find something to like about it <laughs> Yeah. You won't fucking go, oh, well, gutted about that. I'm gutted that we you know, we put fucking 10 men up behind the ball. That, mm. It just doesn't happen. Mm. Yeah, you'd think so. Look, good question, Shona. It got us, yeah. uh, it got us talking. It got us going. Vish, you've got the next question. I do, I do. And it comes from Moon on the Discord. One of the most active Discord members. Big nice. part of the community there. Yeah. Good to hear from him again. Full Fuck. Moon. Uh, you know, I don't mind getting stuff from an email, but it's nice to hear from proper fans. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Luke's a father now. As am I. So is Marcus. As is Marcus, Yeah. yeah. Do they both agree in raising your child to support the team you support, or should you let them decide themselves? I suppose that's more pertinent with Luke. <laughs> if Luke's Maybe. son came out as a came out as a Southampton <laughs> fan, for example, would Luke accept this? Yeah, that's more. I mean, it's more How's of a stretch. That that's that snuck in the run. It's more of a stretch for you because it would be quite odd. Because considering you live in London, if he, if um, well, that's the thing. I can, I can envisage a world where Luke's kid grows up to hate him. Yeah, if, if, if any. Of- <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah. Fuck you now. <laughs> well, I, 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 <laughs> that's fine, is it? Normally, it's edit, edit, edit. Um, that's fine, apparently. I don't think it's fine, um, but it is staying in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I can envisage um, us desperately trying to convert him to yeah, a that's, self that's, that's actually, yeah. Yeah. That's actually yeah. a, fear a bit more likely. Which that's is actually a bit more why likely. you guys don't get access. Um, um, <laughs> I, th- I think for, I mean, I live in southwest London. And but, but but the question is, would you, would yeah, okay, you are you going to let your yeah. children find their own way, or are you going to gently nudge them? What's the, what's the idea? Yeah, I think that's fair. <laughs> the only reason why I would gently nudge one of my sons... Because it's local and you can go. Local and money-wise, you know, because, yeah. again, trying to get tickets for Fulham is a lot easier. Well, yeah. I mean, it's expensive, but it's it's getting the actual tickets is much more easy than, say, at Chelsea. Or oh, Brentford, I suppose maybe that's the... Yeah. Who's the... Uh, QPR, let's let's I'll find out how, who's the cheapest and then we'll go for that. <laughs> no, I, I, but, but if they wanted to, say, support Liverpool or Man City, City for example... Or any team that's that's um, quite far away, I, I would say to them that you do realise that if you want to go and see them, you know, and I'm, I might do it like that. That's not because ideologically or emotionally they shouldn't. It's just kind of like, look, be aware of that. But I suppose trying to say that to a five-year-old is is rather yeah. futile ultimately. No, I, so I, I, I would maybe gently suggest it, but probably. And I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, my I've long been of the opinion really ever since I knew I was going to become a father, that there's absolutely nothing in supporting yeah. Portsmouth for him. Yeah. Like, I, I, geographically, it doesn't make any sense. Um, he's not going to be able to watch them that often. He's not mm-hmm. going to watch them on TV that often, although the, that's new Sky Deal's maybe slightly changed that. Assuming he grows up to like football, I, I will totally let him find his own way. And there's a few reasons for that. Maybe I'll go into one or two of them. I know people who support the rival team that their dad supports yeah. as a response to how their dad was with them when they were kids. And you, lo- really? and you love an argument. I've got friends who, um, two brothers, good friends of mine, who both support Arsenal and their dad supports Spurs. <laughs> like, I, I, know, I just know, I've got a few different examples of it. And I also think, that, you know, um, I really want him to be his own person. So I want him to find his own way in the world and I want him to go after what he likes. And maybe that'll be football, maybe it won't. The only team I've taken to see so far is Peckham Town, which is a very local team to us, which is a great place just to turn up. If you, you know, it's like having kids, you just want to do something, you mm-hmm. haven't got to plan it. Um, there are caveats to that. Obviously, I don't want him to support Southampton. That's clear. Mm. That, that should be a surprise to nobody. But to answer the question, uh, I strongly believe that I want my son to be his own person. So I'm not going to force him to do anything. Uh, and if he likes football and he wants to support Portsmouth, great. Mm. It may rekindle my fucking <laughs> love for them. Yeah, that's after, fair. after many, many yeah. years of annoyance. So who, knows? If, who he, knows? if he wants to become a scammer, you're saying he can. No. I've just said literally the opposite <laughs> of that. Um, let's move on. Charlie on Instagram. Let's finish with this one. My mate's got a wedding next month. It's going to clash with the Tottenham West Ham game next week, which I've got tickets for. I'm currently debating whether it's okay to make an excuse and turn up late for the wedding. Please help me out. Um, don't be a dickhead, Charlie, and go to the wedding. Yeah, it depends how much of a friend he is you, to you, I yeah. guess. If you've got one of those... The best kind of weddings I... I think are the ones where you don't really know that many people you've got no responsibilities it's maybe your partner's vibe or something Mm. and you can go there hoover up the free food and booze and just hang out yeah that's a great one if it's one of them you um, do like getting too drunk and embarrassing your wife though 
tie around the head. Yeah. Yeah. Flies undone. Well, knee slide. Yeah, yeah. And then go to the wedding. <laughs> 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 no, I, I would say there are loads of things much more important than fo- the football. And I think family and friends' weddings are, are one of those things. I don't I don't like the old cliche of the bunch of lads nipping off from the wedding to watch the football. It's, it's a bit pathetic in my view. Having said that, Charlie doesn't give us that much context. If he's a massive Spurs fan who's always wanted to go to a game and never been able to before, this could be a really important no, that's not day it. for him. No, I don't think that's it. What do you no. think, Fish? Uh, no, I think he should go. He should go to your... The fact that he's positing this is because it's a good mate. He, yeah. knows, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. I, I, the fact is that he's saying, oh, I'll turn up late. Well, again, how late? Yeah. But if you're going to actually... If they've catered for you, like logistically, if they've gone to the effort of like yeah, catering yeah. for you and including you into... And you've RSVP'd saying you're going to be there. Yeah, and you don't go there. I think that's a very selfish thing to what do. What if he's just an evening guest? Uh, well, I mean, but he's going to turn up late. W- I suppose, regardless yeah, whatever, of whether he's guest, yeah. he said he's going to turn up late. What I would say is, um, are they going to spare? We'll take him. There's yeah, that. Spurs West Ham's at twelve thirty. By the way, so yeah. I mean, he, he could easily get there. After. Oh, but, so yo, so th- it's twelve thirty in the morning. Yeah, what in the mean? afternoon. Twelve thirty. What? what oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> as, as in, as, sorry. As in, it's a morning kickoff. Oh, it's, well, an, it's, an, it's an early, early afternoon. afternoon, kick- afternoon what has happened kick-off? to you? It's the first game on Saturday. Is what we're saying. Yeah, it's the lunchtime game. It's lunchtime game. So almost certainly he's been invited to the ceremony. Yeah, and if you've invited to the ceremony, so basically you're close saying... enough to him to be considered by him that he wants you there to be involved in that special moment. The, the, yeah. Don't take it for granted. He's saying totally I don't... right, he's... full on, spot on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a kind of situation I can conceive of where you've been invited to a wedding of a very distant person, and you've said you'll go because you've got nothing else on. And all of a sudden, you've got tickets to go to the World Cup final that England are in. You ain't going to the wedding. If it's one of your good friends and it's a standard Common or Garden Premier League game. You you've got to go and um, you've got to go to support your friend and share in that moment, as Vish rightly says. Exactly. Yeah. If he's getting married to your ex, you don't have to go. They, yeah, 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 just but, cover all um, bases. Here. According to Marcus, the only way you should go to the Spurs game is if Spurs play really good football, but don't win because that's important. Yeah, that's that's what I said. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I, Marcus's as I, eyes, you'll, you'll regret it if you've played well, got loads of really high XG, but yeah. lost 1-0. As I, as I proved, uh, you know, uh, when talking about the other one, context is very much needed, and you yeah. guys uh, added that, that for Charlie. Yeah. Marcus, before we go, um, mm. I can't believe we've done a good section there on weddings, yeah. and you haven't talked to us about your favourite wedding cakes. All of them. You, 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 so you go to a wedding, mm. you, you, you're legitimately there, yeah. you're going to get a bit of cake at the end. Yeah. What are you hoping for? Uh, good question. So there is a kind of, as it was at my wedding, there's a kind of standard thing where you have a three-tiered cake. Yeah. You know, the classic sort of icing and marzipan round it and we all gorgeous. <laughs> Look how fat it is about uh, it. It's like me and you are for a beer at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cake. cake the, all the yeah. cakes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you've got... Um, classic fillings, actually, but 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 done very very well. So you well. go chocolate, Victoria sponge, fruit, or something like that. Uh, well, the fruit cake, I was, you, I mean, fruit cake's great, but I think probably more Christmas cake nowadays. Some people do um, Victoria sponge will be one layer, red velvet will be another. That's Ooh. just a diet chocolate cake, though, isn't it? And and carrot cake another. Uh, yeah, cool. this is like carrot a bit, cake, bit huh? fashionable for me. Do you remember when you that bit fa- fashionable? Remember that, fa- remember that phase people went through where you turn up and it'd be a cheesecake. It, this would be cheeses. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they Blocks of cheese. Off. Wheel of cheese, wheel of cheese, wheel of cheese. Piss off and give me the cake. Yeah. A like cheesecake, I can kind of go, well, all right. I'm a Victoria Sponge man. Victoria Sponge is, mm. is fantastic. It's, it's great. I think a carrot cake and revolve, all good choices, but that's your, your classic three tiered. I've never had a wedding cake I didn't like um, because I think it's a hard thing to piss up. Do you know what Have I mean? Have you ever had a wedding you didn't like? Oh, good question. No. no. Plenty, uh, well, not plenty. There, ha- there has been the odd occasion of wedding speeches that I thought, bloody Nora. I told Thank you I saw, a, I saw a wedding speech once yeah. from the best man that was so blue and so Oh, I'm thinking boring. No, but at least at, at least there's something to hang your hat no, on. but there. he was standing Get up. Get their attention. Exactly. Yeah, he was standing up doing his speech. Full on erect. <laughs> no. Oh, it wasn't that blue. And, 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 and <laughs> seriously, the father of either the brother... Did you see this? Because it's often... No. Oh, you saw it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is, I can tell you exactly where it was if you want. Go on then. The Alva Bank Hotel <gasps> in Gosport. Really? In Stokes Bay. Beautiful part. Beautiful. In the middle of Stanley Park. Beautiful place. <laughs> this is years ago. Um, the father of either the bride or the groom, I can't remember, tugged the guy on the trouser leg and said, I think we've all had enough now. Oh. And sat him down. My. And he got back up again did a toast. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> I forgot the toast. Yeah. Deary. They let him do the toast. Bloody hell. Yeah. Fire. I, once, I was saying the grace at a wedding once. And... Uh, the speeches went on and on. Right. 
getting on. Yeah. And people and it, and we hadn't had our meal. Shit. And I was you looking around the room and people are just going. I hate that legend in the lunchtime thing. Five minutes max. Yo, what, mm. what are you trying to tell? Ten, ten minutes max. Ten minutes. What max. are you trying to prove? Yeah, but but I stagger them like a lot of people do now. We did that yeah. in my way. But uh, but people were looking around the room just like and and at, there was an audible groan when some the 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 MC who was this. Um, kind of uh, almost like a town crier type guy. Oh, like a toastmaster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll do it. For, yeah, for, for nothing. You'd quite frankly, at, you'd be good at it. Actually, I'm, I'm magnificent. I tell you. And uh, and and he came home and went right. Um, it's time for for lunch. Oh, thank goodness for that. You could hear. But before we do, I believe Marcus is going to say grace. There was an audible groan, not because it was full of atheists, because it was like another person on the microphone. No, I, I would have groaned. And I said, and I said, I said the grace, and I said it really quickly. And a few people came up to it and said, "Did you say? Did you say the grace quickly? Because it was like a dig at the speeches." Well, did, you, did, you did you go rub a dub dub? Thanks for the grub. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. That, was my, that was my first go to. It, yeah. it wasn't that. It was a little bit more uh, heartfelt and so on. But but yeah, that's a little bit insight into Marcus's wedding um when it finished up mm. he was i got a round of applause he was kind enough to put um the joshua klitschko fight on the big screen one lovely. of the best fights i've seen it's what a great end to a night lovely touch. fantastic lovely touch. anyway thank you very much for go listening. to the wedding charlie <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Spurs West Ham. thanks very much for listening to the football ramble mayo part of the acast creator network remember to get your questions in for next week's episode do follow us on x tiktok and instagram at football ramble and subscribe on youtube or wherever you get your podcasts Thanks, Luke. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Fish. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. See you at the wedding. Thank you for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. A single upload. <laughs> don't miss out on the upload. The uploads are in.